let's go back to our laboratory handout and uh, the next question is uh, what is the number of the first cluster for this uh, specific file um, and then what is the logical sector number and you can see that uh, cluster number is shown in the details panel and the logical sector number is also shown here and then also the physical sector number also is located here so i recommend uh, simply like once you find the correct uh, piece of data uh, you can right click and copy it so copy this value this is our uh, first cluster and then we have the logical uh, sector number so right click and that's uh, the value with the 0, 064 at the end just paste this in and the next question is how is logical sector number useful well uh, a simple answer would be that logical sector number provides a unique position of the actual file content inside a specific volume that is the the file system that we're looking at okay so what is the next physical uh, sector number it's right here again i right click and pick up this number with uh, 127 uh, and uh, copy and paste and number eight how is physical sector number useful uh, very similar answer I would say physical sector number provides unique position of the file content uh, on the entire physical drive so if we switch over uh, if we if we take this uh, physical sector number that we're looking at right now like you know this is the information uh, where our uh, uh, JPEG file begins uh, if we want to navigate switching back to the entire drive space we can here we can go to uh, sector and specify what sector we'd like to jump to and as long as this is physical sector number uh, you see that this is exactly where we are arriving okay so both views can be used uh, with logical sector numbers and physical sector numbers Right, so next uh, question uh, which attributes are present in mft file record for this file so if uh, uh, so we are still looking at the same file cobra02.jpg and in this uh, directory uh, view uh, we can right click and uh, choose position and go to uh, file record because this is the question about the file record we need to jump this allows us to jump from the file content uh, to the record inside mft table which describes the metadata of this file so now we're looking at the portion of mft mft entry or mft record that corresponds to this file and there are two options one is click template manager view uh, menu template manager and select ntfs file record in this uh, set of uh, templates that are available or there's a shortcut right here you can go to template ntfs file record right here which will be showing us uh, the same view right at the top we have file record header which describes the record itself followed by the list of attributes and attributes are identified by their types so we have attribute 10 we have 30 we have 40 and we have attribute 80 so these attributes are present uh, for our uh, file the names of these attributes are shown in one of our slides i'll jump to attribute types and so these are the numbers and uh, so the typically we refer to attribute types uh, um, as um, numeric values in hexadecimal format so number 10 here corresponds to standard information uh, number 30 would correspond to file name right so this is hexadecimal 30 number 40 uh, would be describing object id and this uh, volume version also 
uh, has the same code, but you can ignore it. It was uh, uh, used in early versions of NTFS. And finally, number 80, again, uh, just make sure that you look at the hexadecimal values right here, corresponds to the data, and this is the content of our file. A very quick observation here that uh, number 10, which is standard information, of course, includes these uh, file times, uh, dates and times that are shown right here in our directory browser. Uh, these would be the outdated uh, file times, which uh, correspond to the time of file creation or when it was renamed. And also number 30, which is the file name, of course, includes the actual name of the file. Also notice that all timestamps over here are shown in UTC. Uh, so this is uh, obviously the feature of NTFS that internally at this low level we store timestamps which are time zone independent. So this is universal time or also known as GMT time. All right, uh, to the next question. Question number 10, what is the modification date and time? So again, you have to pick it from the correct uh, attribute, which is uh, standard information attribute and modification time. A date and time is this shown uh, right here. So you can press Control C and you can copy these things from here. This is not very difficult. Okay, okay. and uh, we can see that in our directory browser, actually this time the UTC time uh, has been modified uh, in um, my local time zone. Uh, so the time difference is basically uh, five hours, which is consistent with the uh, Eastern time zone, which uh, my computer is using. So in WinHex, um, you can click Options, then General, and then display time zone. So here um, you can adjust this time zone to, for example, central time US and Canada, which I think uh, would be consistent with the case brief information that is available to us. So I'm just going to make this adjustment for this display and see what, uh, what we're gonna get. So right now it's showing uh, for our file modification time is 9.48.40, uh, which is UTC 14.48.40. So now we're going to say OK. And here now we just made the adjustment and now it's uh, changed to 8.48. So this is how you would adjust this time display uh, specific to the local time of the user um, in WinHex. And again, uh, the time, the topic of the time and translation to specific time zones is very, very important. And uh, if you forget things like these, uh, it's uh, it can be pretty embarrassing if you start using this kind of like inconsistent information in your forensic reports. So just uh, always be very critical of timestamps that are visible in these tools because it's easy to click around but with respect to the time zone information and timestamps shown to you, uh, you must always um, understand how your options uh, reflect on what is actually being displayed in your tool. And uh, this is why you need to be uh, familiar with, the, with all of these features and understand how to make adjustments in every forensic tool that you're using. In our presentation, I have a slide uh, specific to NTFS uh, timestamps. Okay, so you can just uh, read this information right here. And also specific to standard information, where this information uh, coming from. Uh, standard information, uh, that's uh, right here. This is where our modified, uh, created modified and accessed timestamps are stored.